the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Luke 2.15 Hello and welcome to The Well, a spiritual growth podcast from Saddleback Church. My name is Brandon Bathauer. I'm excited to journey with you into this season of Advent. Advent is a season to anticipate, then celebrate, the arrival of Jesus. It is about reflecting on the past, examining the present, and looking to the future. May this be a moment of pause for you, a refreshing reorienting in the presence of the God who is with us. To start, find a quiet place, get away from the noise and the busy, Find a relaxing spot and get settled. Take a deep breath and spend the next few seconds in quiet. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Luke 2.15 You're just preparing to finish up a night watch over the sheep and let your buddy take over. As you lay on some dried grass you've assembled as a bed under the stars, your legs, tired from all the walking, finally get to rest. As you settle, your mind finally begins to wander. Few things show us what we hope for, like the few moments before sleep. Even our worries reveal our hopes. What would that shepherd laying out under the stars hope for? Maybe for an easy day on the job? Maybe for the flock's owner to notice his hard work? Maybe that someday he'll be able to sell enough fleece to be able to support a family. But let's be honest, these shepherds' hopes were probably not too lofty. They probably had to do with getting by, surviving today, maybe an easier day tomorrow. Maybe you feel similar. Maybe the hope that sets your direction and drives your actions is mostly about getting by today, then maybe getting through tomorrow without too much trouble. Maybe your thoughts before sleep are just about the tasks tomorrow, or that conversation at work, or an issue with that friend, or the bank account. As the shepherd's eyes began to close and his consciousness fade, something amazing happened. Something that captures the heart of Advent. The surprising reality of God arriving in our world. Bright light, loud sounds, the sheep probably up and darted in fear. Imagine the shadows dancing around on the grassy ground as the light beamed out in the dark night. Heaven suddenly collided with earth. And like the shepherd's eyes, the connection between these two realities was wide open. Jesus had arrived. Jesus is arriving. This news, this collision, changed everything and changes everything. The shepherd was no longer thinking about tomorrow's tasks of finding new pasture or shearing that sheep's wool, hoping for an easy day. No, the whole agenda had suddenly dissolved. A new agenda was in place. Glory to God in heaven and peace on earth. Good news that causes great joy for all peoples. The prophesied Messiah, this saving hero, is here and his agenda is to set everything right, to fix everything, to initiate a new era of love and joy and peace through a new people. This, in that moment, became the shepherd's hope. Whatever lesser hopes previously filled his mind and heart were quickly dwarfed by this collision with heaven. Sheep are the last thing he's thinking about right now. He's now thinking of a world drenched in peace. Everyone hopes. The question is, 
what do you hope for? Spend some time in quiet with the one who has arrived. Begin by reflecting on what really shapes your hopes. Is it really that God can set everything right through the power of Jesus? Or are your hopes choked out by lesser hopes? Hopes for an easier day tomorrow? Hopes for more stuff? Hopes for people's approval? Hopes for survival? What would it be like to be animated by the hope of the redemption and restoration of the people around you, yourself included? Take some time to ask, what do I hope for? Then ask God, based on this collision of heaven and earth 2,000 years ago, what should I be hoping for? The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Luke 2.15 The great thing about hope is that it isn't just some mental, thought-based thing. This isn't Disney telling you that if you just believe hard enough, if you wish upon a star, that your dreams will come true. The arrival of Jesus, the divine interruption of into the shepherds' lives and into this world is a reminder that our dreams, our wishes, are often far too small. The great thing about letting God shape our hopes is that God will far outdo anything we can ask for or even imagine. The hope for this Savior, the hope that this good news was true, caused the shepherds to drop their plans and agendas and say to each other, let's go see. Let's go to Bethlehem to see what God was talking about. See, hope changes our behaviors, our agendas. Our hope is a map. It sets our destination and direction. But our hope is also an engine that drives us. Hope is a deeply important virtue for followers of Jesus because it motivates the upside-down, not-conformed, Jesus-shaped behavior that we are called to. It is this hope that drives us to love our enemy, to seek first his kingdom above our own, to live generously and sacrificially even when times are hard. Without hope, these will be impossible things to do. When our hopes are small, or worse, wrongly placed, our actions will reflect that. But if your hope is in God, in this promise, you're going to look really different. See, a Jesus-shaped hope isn't about survival or getting by. He is a grand mission to set things right. The Bible tells us that he came to restore the broken, to give sight to the blind, to release the captives, to be present to the lonely, to be food for the hungry and fresh water to the thirsty. When your hope is shaped by Jesus' coming, then your actions will reflect His. When your hope is about the collision between heaven and earth, your actions will seek to reflect heaven's ways here. So, what do your actions tell you about what you hope in? What plans, hopes, agendas need to dissolve away in light of the reality of God's coming near. Take some time and ask God to help you live out the true hope of this season. 
What would your life look like if you knew you'd spend eternity with your loving Creator and Savior? What would your life look like if you believe that your actions of love to neighbor today would echo somehow in eternity? What would drive your life if you really believed that Jesus is the hope of the world? Ask God for a hope that would drive you to living like Jesus. O God of all hope, open my eyes to the things that my heart should desire. Like the shepherds, may the hope that direct my thoughts and my actions be rooted firmly in you. Help me to let go of the hopes that center around me, for these keep me from the life of vibrant hope you've created me for. Most of all, remind me that I carry the hope for a day to come when there'll be no more tears, no more sadness, no more pain, for you will make all things right. May this hope drive my confidence in what is right. Father, remind me of the good work that you began 2,000 years ago that you will carry on to completion in the day of Christ Jesus. Help me hope for you. Help my hope to be in you. Help me offer this hope to the hopeless around me. In Jesus' name, amen.